Good evening, folks. Thanks for joining us tonight. We are continuing our study on Romans, and we are in Romans chapter 8 today. Yeah, and there's some very succinct things that Paul addresses when it comes to how we live our life. It's black and white. Really there are is. no var variables. Paul doesn't paint a, you know, different grayish and white and maybe this and oh well we take into consideration uh-uh he just black and whites it which i love that about paul he he basically says it like it is and so we're looking at romans chapter 8 and we are looking at verses 5 through 8 and as we look at that today there's some very specific things that that paul says to us uh as we as we address this whole thing. And the question that that uh, we came up with is basically, David, you got that question handy? <laughs> I'm turning to the to the verses here. I do. Can you beat sin on your own? You know, I mean, and this is a basic struggle that we have is, is we keep trying to deal with stuff ourselves and trying to beat things ourselves. And, and may, maybe a better way to say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, was why do we think we can beat sin on our own? <laughs> <laughs> well, can you beat sin on your own is a good question because it's a yes or no answer. Yeah, it and, really is. And uh, I, I think I think a very uh, emphatic no is an appropriate answer to it. But then we we can say why. Yeah, why do you think you can beat sin on your own? And our answer is I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so why do we keep doing it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> why don't you let the Lord take over? I don't know. Yeah, you're right. So there's. There's a very succinct response that Paul gives to the question of, you know, do you think you can beat sin on your own? No, no, you can't. And and yet we as human beings contrive all kinds of ways of saying, well, if I only do this more, I only do that more, this less, or this thing or that thing. And it, it really boils down to folks, you can't do it. None of us could. If we could, Jesus wouldn't have had to die on the cross. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I think that we have to keep in mind, like, we have to really understand why we live and how we live as Christians. Yeah. You know, and I, I think it's it's too easy for us to have this mindset of it all being, like, I do this, you know, I did that, I'm going to do this, rather than than really understanding that our, our purpose as a, a child of God is to let Christ live through us. Yeah. You know, and to learn how to let Christ live through us. I shared a scripture verse on, on Sunday, Second Corinthians 5, verses 14 and 15. It starts, it says, for the love of Christ controls us. Mm -hmm. You know, just a starting point in that verse is, who controls us? Does David control me? No, the love of Christ controls me. Rather than the love of self. Exactly. And yeah. so we have a selfishness problem. Yep. That's, that's a basic condition of mankind is a self-centered way of looking at things. And it goes on, it says, because we've concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. Um, so he, he's, he's basically identifying that this is a common condition um, that, that we, we need to identify with him in his death. And if we identify with him, with him in his death and resurrection, so we believe that Jesus died for us and rose from the mm -hmm. grave, uh, it goes on, he, he died for all so that those who live and we and we're able to live because he died on the cross and rose from the dead. Yep. Um, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who, for their sake, died and was raised. Yeah. So that that's that's a hard thing. I think that's a hard pill to swallow. That wait, I'm living for him. I'm not living for myself anymore. So my plans should be his plans. You know, my ways should be his ways. My thoughts should be his thoughts, and all, all those things like. Isn't it good that the Holy Spirit is constantly there as the litmus test for are we living by love for self or love for Jesus? You know, there and a litmus test basically says whether something is this way or that way, one or the other. A litmus test is either yes or no, period. If you stick a strip of litmus paper into a certain component it's going to tell you whether it has that component in it or not yeah and for us it's good that the holy spirit has come into the world to convict the world of sin and whenever we live for self that's living for sin basically yeah. 
And so the Holy Spirit comes along and he works in our life this sensitivity to sin. <clears throat> and I believe that the closer we get to God, the more sensitive we become to sin. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is, is when I first became a Christian, God dealt with my actions and said, that's not good, that's not right, that's not. But then he started to hone in on my attitude and what I set my mind on and what I purpose in my heart. And he, and he began to deal with the very innermost being of my heart to where now there might not be a lot of outward things that I do that people would look at and go, well, he's a sinner. But there are inward things in my spirit that I know grieve God and the Holy Spirit will say, that's not the right thought. That's not the right attitude. That's not the right focus for you to have. And I, I'm thankful for that. And it isn't something that I have to work at. It's just something that happens because the Holy Spirit resides in us, praise God, and helps to bring about a desire to want to love God, to please him, to where I don't want to do the things of myself or the flesh. And it, and it causes me to be able to, uh, I guess a good example would be is I'm no longer the driver of the car. God mm -hmm. is. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just sitting in the seat next to him going where he wants us to go. And it's so much easier to live that way than trying to establish a righteousness all of myself. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't say this. I can't. It, it's no longer. My job now is to make sure that I, that I listen to the Holy Spirit, that I hear what he has to say for me to say or for me to do. And it's so much easier to live that way. So... In other words, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? Like in, in a in a moment? Yeah. You know, I, I'm talking to somebody. Like I was talking to somebody a couple of days ago, um, you know, out in the real world. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, um, we're, she's asking me some questions. And, and I, I feel like the Holy Spirit was, was helping me to respond mm -hmm. and, and and telling me telling me what to share. You know, I, I think... I, you know, we can try to give people our answers, or or we can try to give people answers the Holy Spirit wants to give. What's or, the word got to say? Yeah, yeah, you know, and and that that to me is like, I mean, just simple inquiry. It, it's amazing to me how how many times that just inquiring of the Lord for direction, yeah. uh, you find yourselves all of a sudden with the answer that that you need to say mm -hmm. you know and and uh, it's not not like a mysterious i'm waiting <clears> for <throat> the voice to you know to come out of the sky the booming voice um it, there are times that god does strong things to get our attention but a lot oh, of the yeah. times his spirit dwells within us and he's communing with our spirit so he's able to just to filter things into our into our understanding and in our minds so that we know what to do. You know, it's much like any relationship that we walk in. As we develop a relationship of friendship or a relationship of love with a spouse or with children, we begin to operate in a sense of, I know what they would like me to do. I know what they would want. I know it's, it's basically becoming a student of God to know what is in his heart, to what he wants, what he enjoys what he likes and so there's there's no longer a preoccupation of well i want this or i want that it's god what do you want because i know whatever you want's the best for me and it makes it so much easier than having to try and qualify well does god want me to have this or not you know it's it's no longer that it's okay god i i'm walking with you and you're speaking to me and you're giving me your peace, your strength, your wisdom in everything. I mean, whether it's buying a car, whether it's entering into a relationship of partnership with somebody or into a, into a relationship of, of friendship or marriage, all of those things are qualified by the peace of God and his presence in our life. And it's important for us to recognize the the, the residency of the Holy Spirit within us, guiding us, helping us, 
understand what pleases God and what doesn't please God. Even when we read the word of God, which is powerful like a two-edged sword that divides soul and spirit, that all comes by the Holy Spirit bringing relevance and revelation through the written word of God to where we go. This is what God wants me to do rather than this. And it's, it's not just feelings. It's based and predicated upon the absoluteness of God's word. That's why it's important for us to be students of the word, that we aren't a worker that needs to be ashamed, but rightly handling the word of truth, which Paul speaks to Timothy. It's so important for us to know the word so that we understand the written word gives us, I believe, very black and white understanding of what God expects, what God desires from us. And then there are times when it doesn't specifically say something in the word, but we begin to get a sensing by the Holy Spirit because of what the word of God is trying to fashion within us and what would be acceptable by what the word has to say about life in general. You know, the, the laws that are given in the Old Testament, they were purposed by God to help the people of Israel and, and really every nation of how to live with the health laws, the, the cleansing laws, uh, relational laws, um, the positional laws. They were all given uh, by God so that people would learn how to live in, in a way that would be the best for them, have the most abundant life. That's why the Ten Commandments were given and the other commands were given is so that people would be able to enjoy an abundance of life rather than the effects of sin, which sadly, even the Israelites could not live by the standards of God and, and experienced uh, the effects of rebellion. Don and I were just studying that this morning at our Wednesday Bible study in um, Daniel chapter 9 and Daniel's wonderful prayer of intercession where he recognized that all of us have not done what you have said, either written or by your prophets. We we are now in open shame by being in captivity in Babylon. God wants the best for us, but there are standards that we have to make sure that we're regarding and allowing to be in our life. So Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 8, and uh, you, you want to read that? And I'll read the, I can read the, uh, the Message Bible, what it says also. I, I think that's a good translation. Yeah, let's do that. So Romans 8, 5 through 8 in the, in the ESV says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile towards God. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It's interesting that word hostile means enemy. Yeah. I mean, it's going against anything that God wants. So when, when you think about just the basics of what sin is, we, we, we've talked about this some already, is, is are we living according to what God wants us to do or, or are we living according uh, to what we want to do or, or what things in the world tell us to do? You know, and it, it's interesting. I, uh, so I was talking to this person this week and one of the things that this person suggested was, was that, well, everybody's a child of God. Like, everybody in the world, they're children of God. You know, and, and I think I understood what the person was getting at, just that God loves everybody, wants us to treat people respectfully, and so on and so forth. But, but I, I, I was thinking about it a little bit more, more afterwards, and I, I thought, you know, Jesus talked to some of the people who, who were opposing his, his teaching, and he said, you are of your father, the devil. <laughs> he did. <laughs> you know? I'm like, that doesn't sound like a child of God to me. Not at all. I think everybody has the capacity to be a child of God. Yes. But it's their choice. And, and, and God wants every person to make that choice, to come in and be a child of God. However, we get to choose to listen to an alternative father. Mm -hmm. And and that alternative father wants us to live for ourselves and wants us to pursue sin and wickedness yeah. and passion and lust and all the pleasures of, of the world around us and live for that. So, like, are, are, are some pleasures, are all pleasures bad? I mean, should we just be 
sad. I, I don't think so. I enjoy a great baked loaf of bread. Right. That's yeah. pleasurable. It is. But if I eat that all the time and nothing else, it's going to damage me. <laughs> it sure is. And and God's standards is is that we that we do things without overdoing them mm -hmm. because that's what gets us in trouble. That's what the flesh wants us to do is overindulge, you know, yeah. go ahead and uh, uh, appease the appetites of the flesh. And so there's things that God has given us that are good and wonderful and we need to enjoy them. There, so there are times that we can enjoy things knowing that God has, has given us this provision to be able to enjoy this. And this is a, a blessing from God as opposed to uh, us saying, you know what, I'm going to go do this thing that I want to do regardless of what God, what else God wants me to do. And so we right. give ourselves over to our desires rather than seeking God's counsel. And that, that gets us into trouble. It does. It's, it's where the, we kind of edge God off the throne. We kind of slide him off the throne because of what we want to do. And it may not seem very obvious at the time, but folks... If we can evaluate and judge everything by the Word of God, every attitude, every thought, every action by the Word of God, we will find those times where we are on the verge of pushing God off the throne so that self can be there. And how important it is for us to realize what Paul said in um, you know, the very first part of uh, Romans 12 is that you know, we are to do what? Surrender this flesh as a sacrifice to God, you know, present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Yeah. And how important that is to recognize that this body, this flesh, needs to be sacrificed because the senses of this body get us in trouble if we don't regulate them by the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's so true. Romans fourteen twenty three says that anything that does not proceed from faith is sin. Yeah, you know, and and well, faith in who? Well, the Son of God, and, and what He wants to do through our life. Yeah, you know. So when when we're talking about this, that there's following God, and there's following the the one who's the father of lies, the the one the one who brought sin into the world, you know, and that's the devil, who by the way led a mutiny in heaven against God. So yeah, when when we're pursuing True pride that said, I can do better exactly that's what self says <laughs> yeah and self says well i know what's better for me yeah and i'm going to do what i want because that's what i want mm -hmm. and and so when you think about it that way you know like sin literally you might think well it doesn't seem like that big of a deal to me to do this little thing that i want to do right yeah but you're following the the great mutineer <laughs> you know the that that led a rebellion against god in heaven that yeah. is god's enemy that's right. And, and you know, a little virus, just a minuscule thing that's microscopic might not seem like a big thing, but it can impact the whole body. It does. And when we choose to follow self instead of God, it impacts the body of Christ around us uh, in many ways. Well, let me read what the Message Bible has to say. Eugene Peterson, who uh, was a Bible translator and a scholar of Greek and Hebrew, um, his backstory was is he, he was a professor at a college and then he was asked to pastor a church. And, you know, there's a big difference between being in a classroom and being in, in a congregation. Yeah. And he found that people were not paying attention to the Word of God when he was reading it to them. So he set out to translate uh, the Greek and the Hebrew into everyday uh, mindfulness that we live in today. And what he did is he, he gave us a paraphrase. It's not a translation per se, but it's a paraphrase of thoughts of how it can be said in everyday language that we understand today. So let me read this. And, and David, you want to read those verses again, and then I'll jump right into this one. Sure. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And here's what the Message Bible says. Those who think they can do it on their own end up obsessed with with measuring their own moral muscles, 
but never get around to exercising it in real life. Those who trust God's actions in them find that God's spirit is in them, living and breathing God. Obsession with self in these matters is a dead end. Attention to God leads us out into the open, into a spacious, free life. Focusing on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God, ends up thinking more about self than God. That person ignores who God is and what he is doing, and God isn't pleased at being ignored. Amen. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You know, I get pretty frustrated when my kids ignore me when I'm speaking to them. Yeah, and you have to say, look at me when I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> and, Are you paying attention? <laughs> do I uh, like to hear myself talk? <laughs> you start hearing those kinds of things come out, and you're like, oh, what's happened Sounds to like me? Sounds like your parents. I know. <laughs> <laughs> How important it is for us to recognize if we have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life, we are called to a higher purpose than serving self. We have crucified self. We have allowed that to become dead to us, and we are now living a life that is in Christ. And a friend of mine, Pastor Assurance, made a comment last week on Galatians 2.20. And his, his thought was, is faith that is of Christ, not in Christ, and of Christ. And I, I understand what he's saying is, is we operate in the faith that is of Christ. In other words, it's his power, it's his faith, it's not our faith. And I, I, I recognize that there's a wonderful picture given to us that it's kind of like riding a, a bicycle built for two, and that is, is that Christ is doing all the pedaling. <laughs> and we're yes. along for the ride because it's his faith operating in us. It's his faith doing the work in our lives. Yeah. And it's through the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit that, that he, the Holy Spirit sparks the faith of Christ within us to want to please God, to want to serve and honor God. And, and what a wonderful picture that can be to us that, folks, even after we get saved, it's not our faith. God says, in his word that he's given every man a measure of faith and we all operate in the same measure of faith but it's God taking that faith and exercising it by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that causes it to burst forth to to bring radical change in our lives it, it's that seed of God within us that begins to grow and grow and and it's our job in this respect folks we nurture that seed of faith to where it grows and becomes huge, like a tree, mustard seed of faith. Or we neglect it, we kick it under the dirt. I mean, it, it begins to grow and we, we step on it, we break the stem, and, and we, we make room because we indulge the flesh more. And it's really our choice. What are we gonna fertilize or what are we gonna water spiritually in our lives? The seed of self, flesh, or the seed of faith that God has germinated and put within us. It's our choice. Yeah, you, you know, I feel like a lot of the times when we're dealing with uh, sinful thoughts or uh, behaviors, I, I think a lot of the times our, our methodology helps us to focus on it and makes the problem worse. It does. You know, because we, we think, well, I just thought a, a lustful thought. that I, I, I didn't want to think that. So next time... I, I'm going to do this kind of thing so that doesn't happen. We start making all these laws and rules for ourselves. And the uh, regulations that we put in place that say, I'm not going to think on that, cause us to think on that. Exactly. And it's the same problem right. the Israelites had with the law of Moses. Yeah. Paul said yeah. to think on these things in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. And, and it's important for us to make a choice of uh, have what I call displacement theology. You know, if I'm preoccupied not wanting to do something, it's stuck in me. But if I make a choice to displace that with thoughts of God and his kingdom and meditate on his word or sing the songs that God has given me, it pushes that thing out. Totally. So yeah. you have this like dirty thought come into your mind and you, you, you start to think about it. Then you're like, I don't want to think about that. So, mm -hmm. so what do you do? I, I, I would suggest that, that if you want to make a rule for yourself, make this rule. 
So when those things start to happen, ask the Holy Spirit, what's something else I could do? <laughs> and, and then do what he says. Because yeah. all of a sudden you'll have, well, you, why don't you go do the dishes? Or why don't you go talk to so-and-so? Or why don't you do this? Right? And, and the Holy Spirit's really good at like redirecting us on what, what God wants us to do. Yeah. And, and focusing us where we need to focus. And, and um, he might, he might start reminding, like you said, like, Hey, go do the dishes and I want you to sing this song you'll, and, right. and you'll have a, a, maybe a worship, a praise song that starts coming up. And sure. And, and that, that to me is, is so much more powerful than being like, well, when those thoughts come up, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go read through the book of Psalms and I'm just going to do that every time. You know, I mean, that, that might be good, but <laughs> you know, like the Holy I, Spirit's telling you to do it, go do it. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like sometimes we make these rules for us that I, mm -hmm. I'm I'm combating this with my own knowledge and my my own thing. Well, and, I'm thinking that, so I better do this. That's what I told myself I was 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 gonna do. Yeah, and and the Holy Spirit's so much. He's so much more subtle and, and creative. He, yeah, he's more yeah. creative. He he reacts to situations better than yeah. we do. I. I uh, challenged people uh, that would come to me and say, man, I keep thinking this over and over again. And I would tell them about the purple elephant with the pink polka dots. And I would I would use the example of, okay, I want you to think about a purple elephant, pink polka dots, 13 foot tall elephant right outside the door here. He's tied and tethered to a, a stake with a rope and he's pulling on it. And he, he thinks he can't get away because that's the way he's been trained. And he's got big, long white tusks that are six feet long and he's 13 feet tall. and and, and I say, you got that picture? And they go, yep. And I said, okay, I don't want you to think about the purple elephant with the pink polka dots that are three inches round. I don't want you to think about the elephant that's purple with the white test. I don't want you to. And I say, so what'd you think about? And they said, oh, I was trying not to think about what you were talking about. I said, exactly. But I said, uh, if, if, if we think about a kangaroo, remember kangaroos? And maybe you've seen pictures of them. Pastor Assurance, if you're listening, you probably saw kangaroos in Australia. And uh, the little joeys that pop out of the pouch, and when the mom would bend over to eat, the little joey would eat. And, and uh, they'd jump around, and sometimes they'd, they'd spar with each other and get in fights. And they can run, man. They can hop like crazy and long and high. And uh, then what I would do is I asked the person, so what are you thinking about? And they said, well, the kangaroos, kind of. I mean, the, the purple elephant's still in there, but it's the kangaroos. And it's, and it's pushing out those thoughts. And we do the same thing with the Word of God. When we think lustful thoughts, when we think bad thoughts, when we think thoughts of pain and hurt because somebody's hurt us, what we do is we go, no, Lord, I'm thinking on your word. I remember what Jesus said, that the man who was forgiven a great debt uh, went out and then didn't forgive the person who owed him just a little bit. And Lord, I'm going to make a choice. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to operate like you want me to do. I'm going to be a man who built his house on the, on the rock, not on the sand. And, and you begin to fill your mind with what the Word of God is. And the Holy Spirit will remind you. He'll give you uh, scriptural thoughts all the time, or a scripture song, or a a song that he'll help you to begin to sing, a song of what I call the Spirit, you know. And another thing you can do is start talking and praying in tongues or sing in tongues, you know. There's mm -hmm. been many times that I've done that because I didn't know what to think on, but I started to just sing, sing in tongues or speak in tongues. What a powerful uh, operation we can have in the Holy Spirit where it pushes out those thoughts and attitudes and it fills us with the kingdom of god i, I always think about it like pathways in the forest you mm -hmm. know there's there's well-worn pathways in the forest that as long as people keep using them they're going to be easily accessible that's right um, and the uh, new pathways are kind of hard to walk through because there's bushes and branches and limbs and all kinds of stuff but you start making a new pathway, it's kind of hard to walk at first. But if you keep walking it, the other one's going to start to get overgrown. Right. And your new path is going to become easily accessible. Great example. Great and, example. And it, it, it takes, takes work, work to think on new things, doesn't it? It yeah, does. It really does. Yeah.
Praise God. So verse 5 says it very succinctly. For those who are according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So it's our choice. What are you going to think on? The things of the flesh, things of the Spirit. God has set us free from the things of the flesh, folks. We don't have to give in to that any longer. So we're not under the control of the flesh any longer. We don't have to be. No, we don't. It doesn't rule us. Sometimes right? we feel like we can't break free from the control of sin. But and Christ Christ is either all-powerful and, uh, and, and, and all-knowing and, and knows how to set us free, or he isn't. You know, it's, he's either a liar to us or he's the truth. Yep. It's our choice. Yeah. You know, sometimes you might be like, well, I, I don't think lustful thoughts all the time or blow up in anger, but maybe, maybe you do something like, uh, man, I really messed up today. I'm such an idiot. You know, <laughs> you're not an idiot, but God made you, <laughs> you know, there's nothing idiotic about you, but we, we, we have this self-talk in a lot of ways that, that is totally faithless and, and it, it's full of hopelessness and despair and, it, and it, it doesn't trust God, you know, because we beat ourselves up in, in so many ways. And, and you think about it, God designed you. And, and God, when God looks at you, he sees a beautiful creation or a, a person who has the potential to be everything that God ever desired out of, out of your life. That's what God sees when he looks at you is he sees potential. You know, and sometimes we look at ourselves and be like, man, I'm just the same old screw up that I keep messing up over and over again. Yeah. I keep falling into the same traps and I, I, I'm a lost cause. And, and those are just lies because I don't think God looks at you like that. God looks at you and sees all the potential of the kingdom of heaven. So rather than, than negative self-talk like that, that's really a sinful, it, it, it's like, um, it's, it's nurturing a self-centered thought process that mm -hmm. says, I'm, I'm hopeless it, it all depends on me, and because I stink, it's still life selfish, stinks. isn't it? It's very selfish. Yeah. R rather than being like, "Wow, you know, I could have, I could have done today better," you know, and so, and Holy Spirit, I feel like you have better ways for me to handle things, and and can you help me next time to be aware of what you want me to do instead? Yeah, I remember a kid song that Bill, Bill and Gloria Gaither wrote. I am a promise, I am a possibility, I am a promise with a capital P. And it uh, basically says, I can be anything that God wants me to be. And, and it's, it's filling our mind with what God can do in us, not what we can't. And it's important for us to, to set our mind on the things of the kingdom of God, setting our mind on what God can do in us and through us. You know, there's a there's a prayer that David prayed in Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24 that that uh, I really like. It says, "Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my anxious thoughts." So when you said, "Well, I don't think bad thoughts all the time," or "I'm not have an attitude." I guarantee the time you say that to God, God is going to say, oh, let me point out to you. <laughs> yeah. You're just not aware of it. <laughs> Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And the word anxious yeah. means disquieting. In other words, those things that go against God. And in verse 24 says, and see if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. And, and what a good prayer is that God... Let me be an open book, and if there's anything that is smelling of self, expose it. We had a, a get-together here at the church a while back, and, and we made a bunch of hamburgers and hot dogs and things, and, and a great day it was of fellowship. And um, about a week later, we began to smell something really putrid. It was bad. I thought a mouse died somewhere. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. I thought a rat died. A it rat. was that. Yeah, it, it, that's it true. It filled the whole fellowship hall. It, it, We're yeah. walking around looking. What? What died? I mean, did we not empty a garbage can? And it really smelled. It reeked for for days. We couldn't figure out what yeah. it was. Yeah. And so finally, looking in the kitchen, we checked everywhere, and I opened the oven, and there was a foil pan full of hamburgers that were moldy and oh they were terrible and once we got rid of that it took care of it and 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 a dangerous prayer to pray is god search me and know me and see if there be any putrid sinking stinking smell of self 
and and help me to get get rid of it. You know, allowing God to say that stinks, that really smells to me, and maybe we can't smell it spiritually, but God does, and we allow Him to expose and open anything in us that is putrid and messy, so that we get rid of it. it it's it's so important for us to allow God to deal with the things in our life. And it might be a small thing right now, but if it's left there, it festers and it infects everything around it, folks. I've seen people that started out well, but but they did not end well because there were attitudes and habits that they, they allowed in their life. And um, a good example, when we lived in Hawaii, cockroaches are everywhere. I mean, they're everywhere. If, if you live in Hawaii, you get used to cockroaches. Anybody that goes to visit Hawaii or live in Hawaii, they're freaked out by how many cockroaches are everywhere. And uh, what I what I learned to do is you don't tolerate cockroaches. I mean, you do something. You kill them. Somehow or another, you seal up bags, everything. Because as soon as you start to see cockroaches, there are thousands of them. And uh, I used to use this example in Hawaii. Folks, what do you do when you see a cockroach? You kill it. You don't let it live. You don't go, oh, it's just one little cockroach. You kill the thing because it can have thousands of babies. Well, Hawaii has those big cockroaches. They do. We call Com them Kona cruisers. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, you step on it and you slide for about three feet. <laughs> but the thing is, is you take care of it. And that's the way sin is. When it pops its head up, we, we kill it. We get rid of it because if we don't, it begins to breed and it begins to process more and more sin in our life. And it's a terrible thing. It's so much easier to live by the, the, the work of the Holy Spirit, living by the Spirit of God that constantly is encouraging us, strengthening us, helping us to find things in our life that are not good, that are not pleasing, that stink, and dealing with them. It's such an easier way to live than anything that we can do out of self-will or or we think we've got it all together. It's it's coming to God and saying, I am weak, but you are strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, just like the song says. <laughs> yeah, amen. So we should pray. <clears throat> amen. Father, you know our hearts. Yes, Search you us, do. God, and explore the depths of our spirits yes, and our okay. minds and our mm -hmm. beings, Lord. Search us and know our ways, Lord, and and uh, show us how to walk in the ways everlasting in your yes, ways, God. Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would help us to flee sin and to have that desire in, in our in our hearts and our minds to, to run from sin, that, that it would be something that would repulse us and we, we can't tolerate it in our life, Lord, that, so that we would let you show us a better way to live. Mm -hmm. Help us to know your ways, O oh God. And, and for the person who's just feeling like uh, it's easy for you to say, um, you don't know what I'm going through, Lord, I pray that you would let them know that you do know yes, you do. what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And I pray, God, that you would help them. Just give them that sense of confidence right mm -hmm. now in this moment, that sense of your spirit, your presence, mm. that they would know that you're there to help them, to lead them in the ways everlasting. Your word is true. Mm -hmm. And sin has no dominion, no control over a believer. Mm -hmm. And perhaps if you're listening, you, you need to uh, get on your knees and, and uh, surrender your life to Jesus again. Yes. And say, Jesus, I haven't been following you, but, mm -hmm. but I need you to come and save me. Yes. And, and Lord, we know that you've promised that you will. And so I pray that you would just deliver your presence and your help to people as they're, as they're calling on you for help. I pray that you would help people to be in, right. good encouragers of others, too, mm -hmm. to trust in you, to, that we would hold each other up in this battle against the flesh and worldliness and, and wicked thoughts, and that, mm. that together we would be a, a people of God who set ourselves apart for God's use. Yeah, so God. Father, I thank you for the truth of just the simple children's song. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones, to him belong. We are weak, but you are strong. Yes, you love us. And so help us, Lord, to hide in your strength, under your wings, even as the Bible tells us in yes. Psalm 91. I thank you that our strength comes from you 
not from ourself. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, folks, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I'd love to invite you to join us at church on Sunday. I'll tell you, God's really been moving in our services. His presence Beautiful has worship. Been so good um, in the worship times. And I just really feel like God's speaking to our people. And uh, God's given you a good word to share, too. God's the battle good. that we're in. Yeah, God's yeah, good. Really good. Yeah, God's good. So if you haven't been here, you're, you're missing it. And, and, and uh, so I inv encourage you. I know sometimes it's hard. And the last thing you want to do is to get up and go somewhere. But I encourage you to come and join us. If, you, if you're physically capable, uh, come to church and join us. And, and, and come before God together with us. Yes, amen. We'll, we'll see you next week. God bless you, folks.